we're going to look at using uh, standard entropies to determine the entropy of a reaction. And uh, to it's, what I should say is to determine the change in entropy of a reaction. So um, we're, we have that big table of S0, and we know what the entropy of all of those different compounds are. What we can do is we can create an equation that's going to allow us to look at, well, we're starting with this entropy, and we're ending with this amount of entropy. So what was the change in entropy? So the way the equation is going to look, and this is going to be reminiscent of how we did delta H. If we want to do delta S naught, what we do is we take the sum of the, uh, the entropy of the, rea the products times the number of moles involved in the reaction minus the sum of the number of moles times the entropy of the reactants. So remember, entropy is a state function. So it doesn't matter what the pathway is. As long as we know what we had from the products relative to the reactants, we can get the change in entropy. So if you remember, if we, we used to draw these graphs back in um, chapter 6, and, and these were for enthalpy. If you add up all of the reactants uh, entropies, and then our products entropies are down here, then the, basically the delta S is going to be the difference between the reactants and the products, or the, the change from the products to the reactants. So this is sort of the same idea as Hess's law. So let's actually look at a problem that uh, involves using um, this standard free enthalpy change to do some... Uh, chemistry. So uh, this problem, lecture problem three, it says calculating delta S of a reaction from standard enthalpies. So it says calculate the change in entropy um, delta S at 25 degrees Celsius for the reaction in which urea is formed and um, from ammonia and carbon dioxide. The standard entropy of um, urea it, the standard entropy of urea, ammonia, CO2, and H2O are 174 joules per Kelvin per mole, 192, 213.7, and 69.95, respectively. So how do we set this up? A couple of things first. You'll notice that we have de delta S0, and we have 25 degrees Celsius. That makes sense because these things are all, these are all S0s. So we need to be under standard conditions for this thing to work. So that's just some, that's just a little bit of uh, making sure that everything makes sense. And then we have our reaction here where we have 2NH3 plus CO2 gives the urea and the water. So when we set this up, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to set up our equation. And what I like to do is I like to sort of put delta S on the one side, and it should be delta S0. And then I like to start figuring out what we've got. So we're going to start with our products. So we put a, a big bracket here, and we'll start with the... Uh, urea, which, let's see, the urea is 174 joules per Kelvin mole. So these are in order. So we have one mole of urea, so we're going to put 1 times 174 joules per Kelvin mole. Then we're going to add to that the water. So we find in the list of uh, the water, which is 69.95, and we've got one of those. So we put 1 times 69.95 joules per Kelvin mole. And then we're going to close our bracket and we're going to subtract um, our reactants. So for ammonia, we have 2 times 192.7 joules per Kelvin mole. And then we have plus 1 times the CO2, which is uh, 213.7 0.7 joules per mole Kelvin. And then we close our bracket. So then when we do our subtraction, we get a delta S0 in this case of minus 356 joules per mole 
Kelvin. So it's exactly like Hess's law. Um, you need to get those standard entropies. Now, in the textbook problems, you may have to look them up in the table. But in um, on the exam, we'll either give you the table or we would give them to you in the problem just like this. So this this is the this is sort of the end of this piece. Um, the next thing we're going to look at in the next video is going to be how we can determine if a reaction is spontaneous from some thermodynamic parameters.